ahead and go to Psalm chapter 5 this morning. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, we, we've been on a series, and we are on a series. This is, I, 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 when I first got this message, I wasn't sure this was going to be on the series. We've been on a series on the words of your mouth. Holy Spirit told me, he said, my people are not taking me seriously regarding the words of their mouth. Uh, they, they, they've heard the sermons, they, they know the right way to do it, but they're not taking me seriously. They're still allowing the words of their mouth to just do, say whatever they want to say. Um, and, and therefore, therefore it's hard. It, it, matter of fact, it's impossible for me to bless them the way I want to bless them. If they're saying one thing, I cannot operate a different way. And I know some people are like, well, Pastor Pat, that, 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 no, my God is more than, he's, he's more than able, he's more than powerful. He himself said that, that uh, he was limited in the, in the wilderness because the children of Israel kept saying, you brought us out here to die, right? He said that he was limited. So again, if it's just Pastor Thad saying that, that we're limiting God, then maybe take it with a grain of salt. But he said that he was limited when we don't walk by faith, when we don't speak the words of our mouth. And so we need to, we got to get to that point where, where the words of our mouth become as important to us as the air we breathe. Ain't nobody in this room that is that wakes up in the morning. Now, granted, I understand we're not, we don't put a lot of thought into the air we breathe unless we don't have the air to breathe. You know, if you're, if you, uh, I, you, you, we, we, how many take it for granted going to a, to a restaurant now and not having smoke fill the restaurant? How many of us remember the days when you'd walk into a restaurant and, and, and they had the smoking section? I always loved the fact they had a smoking section and there was nothing dividing the smoke. It wasn't like a closed room. It just was, this is smoke and this is the, and then the smoke, you know, weird thing about smoke is it goes where it wants to go. And it would just filter over here. Oh, and, you know, and, 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 and now, now we just take it for granted that they've said, hey, you know, that's not a good idea. So, so we, we. Well, um, that's the way it is with the words of your mouth. We need to get so un, go so used to speaking the words of, of life and, and the words that uh, God has given us, the, the, the word of God, that our words line up with his words, that it becomes as much as a part of it that we don't even think. We don't even think about, you know, words unless, it's, unless you hear some that are polluted. Now, I don't know about you, but I've worked, I've worked a lot of years on really working on the words of my mouth. Am I perfect yet? I'm being perfected. Um, but but I, I've been in situations where I'm just around people that they don't hear this. And they'll say things like, well, that scared me to death. And I haven't heard that saying in so long that it's, it's one of those things going, what did you say? Well, I mean, it, it, it's almost like, um, smoke drifted over, and I'm going. <laughs> what was that? What? What? I, that that is the weirdest thing, uh, it, the weirdest saying in the world. Scared me to death. Because all I know is that it got me moving. It scared me to life. It scared me. But we just say it the other way. All right, I, I'm going to leave that alone. Um, but um, but, but I, I'm going to just kind of start things out the way I started out. We obviously in a day live in a day. And live in a time period where it feels like a lot of things have gone off the rail. And that's why I think it's really easy for us when we're together with people or whatever, begin talking about everything that's wrong, words are about, go on social media, type everything that's wrong, uh, complain about what we complain about, because there's so much about what's going on in the world today that just feels weird, it feels to a level almost evil. And over in, in 2 Timothy, you don't have to turn here unless you want to, but you don't have to turn here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version. It's, it, it describes what's going on today um, as in the, last da, in the last days will come or set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. And when we look at what's going on in the world, we go... Hit that one on the nose. We're living in a day and a time where what we're seeing is is annoying, and and, and a lot of times we look at this and we and and I've I've heard way too many pastors preach this 
they, 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 they allow it to become a, a, uh, a journey down, a, down, down this rabbit hole of doom and despair. Uh, uh, oh, things are going to get tough in this world. It's going to be tough. We're going to be hanging on by the skin of our teeth uh, until Jesus comes back. It's going to get worser and worser. And, 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 and they'll preach it. They'll talk it. They'll speak it. And I'll sit there. I've, I've had conversation. I, I, I heard, I said, yeah, but, but uh, um, there's, there's going to be an end time increase, end time blessing. God's going to bless his people. There's going to be a revival at the end times. And, 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 and they were like, well, probably spiritually. They had to correct me because, but see, here's the thing. Is, is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, is it truth? Absolutely. And, and again, all you have to do is, I was going to say pick up a newspaper, but we don't pick up newspapers. <laughs> Go on the internet, and it, it's pretty obvious that, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's true. But for God, things are going haywire quick. But here's the beautiful thing. Not one place in Scripture says that what's going to happen in the end times negates the Word of God, negates the power of faith, negates what God has said, negates His promises. There's not one place in Scripture that says what's coming makes, makes His Word none, of none effect. Not one place. And here's the good news. Here's the thing that the Holy Spirit uh, wants us to understand. That as we move closer to the end of times, we need the Word of God more than ever. And if we follow the Word of God more than ever, and we get closer to the Word of God and function more inside of the Word of God, guess what we're going to get? What the Word of God says we can have. So the world will get darker, dimmer, frustrating, and the church will get lighter, brighter, and more glorious. He's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb, living uh, as heads, not the tails, living above and not beneath, being victorious, coming in and going out. That's who he's coming back for. So while the world gets darker, Isaiah chapter 60 says it. What's the world going to come to? Our light. They're going to come to us shining. And so, so don't get commonplace on spirit talking about how bad things are. we got to fill, up, fill, our, fill our mouths with how good God is. You understand, Jesus never talked about how big the mountain was. He never told us to talk about how big the mountain was. He just said to tell it to move. Now, when, when I was down on in, in vacation, um, the first Sunday we were there, um, I was trying to sleep in a little bit, and, and uh, we dr we'd driven a bunch, and we were tired. And I, I lay there in my bed, uh, trying to go back to sleep. It was probably seven seven o'clock or something like that. And I'm, you know, you, know, you get your eyes closed. You think if I block out the world, I surely I'll fall asleep. But the Holy Spirit started speaking to me, and um, and it probably took me about. Two minutes, and and I and he gave me a message, and this this is the message. Um, because he, he dropped in my heart Psalm chapter five verse twelve. I think I, I said verse eleven. I don't know, verse twelve into my heart, and he began to uh, let, let's go ahead and re, let's read it. So so make sure we're all on the same page here of what it says. It says for for thou Lord may bless. No, possibly will. Come on, hey folks, listen. We can't, don't go overboard on this stuff. Yeah, that's what it says, isn't it? He will bless the righteous. He will bless the righteous with favor. Wilt thou encompass him as with a shield? And the Holy Spirit, I just, that, that scripture just rose up inside of me. And I was just, I, I began thanking him for the favor of God that was going to, that was going to come the next week as we were on vacation and enjoying vacation. And I just began thinking about that. And, and he just, he began talking to me 
about how important walking in favor is in our lives. How, how again, I think, I think a while back I preached a message that said, uh, that said walking in favor isn't just important, or it isn't just good, it's essential. And again, how we've started this with what, the way the world's going, if you're not walking in favor, you're going to fall right into the pattern of this world. And he said it's essential that you be that, that the children of God walk in the favor of God. Unfortunately, too many Christians, even those who know about favor, get lackadaisical. Pastor Mike said, you forget. You start, wh why do you forget? Because you start thinking about everything that's going on around you. What did I just watch on the news? What did I just read uh, online? What did this person just say? What did this person just post? And we get so focused at that that we forget about the favor of God. <clears throat> and, and we end up uh, uh, falling into the trap of, of uh, well, it's the end times. Things are going to get bat badder and badder. <clears throat> I, I didn't get name grammar. <laughs> it, things are going to get worse and worse. It's the end times. Listen, it's just part of, it's part of the thing. I don't know how many Christians I've heard, hear, heard, heard say that. Boy, I'm, 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 I'm doing good. Batter and batter and they heard it. Uh, I don't know how many Christians I've heard say that. It's just going to get worse and worse. Beloved, no. Yeah, yes, out there. But quit focusing on what's out there. The sun doesn't focus on the darkness. It just shines. It does what it does. And when we're spending all of our time focused on how bad everything is, what's, what's going to be the outcome? It's not going to be that we shine brighter. But when our focus is on the things of God, and the Word of God, and the will of God, and the plan of God, and the goodness of God, then we're going to begin shining the way He intended for us to shine. Now, sure, battles come. I'm not going to tell you that battles don't come. I, I'm, not, I'm not naive enough. The Word of God says that don't think you're different because you've got battles because they come to all of us. But we've got to understand that we're different. That if you are righteous, favor will surround you. And there's nothing in the word favor. If you go to the Hebrew, there's nothing in the word favor there that even kind of even hints to negative. It's words like delight. It's, it's words like desire. That's what this favor in, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, that's what it means. Now, when we use the word favor, we're just simply, uh, the, the definition I like to use is basically unfair partiality. Doing something for one person you wouldn't do for everybody. I do things for my kids that, that I don't do for everybody else. I love y'all. But I do things for my kids that I don't do for everybody. Last night we went to a, 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 a Cubs game. The Reds were playing also, but it was a Cubs game. And, uh, and, and, and there were about, my guess is, thirty to 40,000 people there. I thought at first they were there to hear me preach, but then I realized, no, it's probably the baseball game. So I let it slide. But, but four of those kids, four of those people out of the 40,000 people, got a credit card from Jessica and I to go buy whatever they wanted to buy from the concession stand. Well, Pastor Dad, why didn't you do it for everybody else? Well, first of all, they ain't my kids. Well, okay, period, they ain't my kids. My kids got, 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 got taken care of by us. My kids, I think Ryan bought a water at the end of the night, but my kids didn't pay any, use any of their money. They didn't use their gas. They showed up and dad took care of them. If I, being an earthly dad, know how to give good gifts to my kids, how much more does my daddy in heaven know how to pour out his goodness on you? How much more? The favor of God is God showing off to his kids or the righteous, showing off to his kids and making it shine brighter than, than what, what happens with the world. Um, Jerry Savelle, one of his definitions, I think he has several, but it's when everybody else says no, 
God says yes. That's the favor of God. When everything around you shouts no, God says yes. Beloved, we have got to understand, if we are going to shine, if we're going to do what God wants us to do in these, in, in these last days, that we're going to have to stand, understand, understand and stand in the favor of God. Enjoy His benefits. Psalm 103. Forget not all of His benefits. Right there, Pastor Mike, you're right on. I, I, you, you heard me, amen, and you. Uh, because I knew He was right on. Whereas, don't let any of His benefits slip away. A while back, the Holy Spirit told me that favor is our heritage. It's to be passed down from generation to generation. It's really interesting. I never, I never operate in a way, I, I never planned before service and think, okay, my sermon is going to say this, so I'm going to worship, operate in a certain way. Um, I just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to me when I'm up here and, and, and then what, what He tells me to do. But I started thinking of things like, like right there. It's our heritage. Are we passing down that self-worth, that, 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 that self, lack of self-worth gene? Or are we passing down the favor gene? Are we showing our kids how favor of God works? Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, hallelujah. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave that be. But it's our heritage. It's in our blood. Now the question is, why are we not believing it? Why are we not seeing it? The, que the real question is, why doesn't anything else come out of our mouth? I got to, I got to, I got to use these next few lines that I, the way I typed them. I got up at six thirty this morning and I just typed and I, I typed pretty much nonstop until about eight o'clock. I, I, it's not that bad, um, but I, I, I have, you know, why, why does the question really is, is why would anything else ever come out of your mouth? You say, you say, well, I guess that, how, I mean, I guess I expected that, that, that probably is what I expected to happen or. It seems like it always works out that way for me. In, in, in the words of a, of a mighty statesman, come on, man. You hear Joe Biden say that? Come on, man. I just, I just thought it was funny. I just, it hit me good. Come on, man. Why, beloved, why are we, if we understand the word of God, we know the good we're supposed to be doing, why are we allowing those things to come out of our mouth? You're a child of God. God Himself intends on things working out for you that don't work out for everybody else. Psalm chapter 30, verse 5, simply says, For His anger endures for a moment, in His favor is life. And, and the literal, uh, the, the amplified version says, says, but His favor is for a lifetime. Beloved, you cannot, as a child of God, as the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you cannot live in life the way He wants you to live in life without operating in the favor of God. His favor is for your lifetime. Beloved, how are you going to go from glory to glory? By the favor of God. What, what, what did he, how did he identify Mary when he put the word in her, when she carried the word? Highly favored one. You can't go from glory to glory. You can't go from faith to faith without the favor of God. You can't, you can't, uh, you, you can't increase in life without the favor of God. But you've got to grab a hold of it. You've got to think about it. And again, I, I love what Pastor Mike said in the offering teaching because it's so accurate. Is that if you forget it, you'll lose it. Hallelujah. Well, as I laid there on that Sunday morning, um, and, he, and he emphasized to me the importance of the favor of God, uh, he, about 30 seconds, and he gave me my message. I mean, it was literally, I, I just meditated on the favor of God for a while. And then he said, I want you to see three things. And he just pointed it out to me real quick. I was like, that's awesome. There's my message. I got up, I got up a few minutes later and, and went out and grabbed my pad of paper and, and wrote it down. 
and uh, told Jessica, sermon number one's done for the week. I'm expecting sermon number two. And I did get the sermon number two also. That'll be next week. Um, but there's three things I want to show you about uh, Psalm chapter five uh, that the Holy Spirit really emphasized in me that, that are essential uh, for us to understand regarding favor. Now, if, again, if you understand what favor is, is God doing things for you that isn't done for everybody. A lot of times, and again, that, 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 that feeling of inferiority really will get you to say, well, who am I to, to expect this? Who am I to do this? And that's what the Holy Spirit said. We've got to squash that because if I, prom- if I gave it to you, if I gave it to you, it's for you to use. And again, I, I've used this illustration before, but I remember, man, it was back probably 2005, 2006. It's been a while ago. That's crazy how long it's been, Steve. But I remember that day that I was sitting in service and the Holy Spirit said, uh, give Steve your Bible. And I was like, I was like, oh, Lord, no, I think you meant uh, this other guy. And God goes, I know who I meant. Give Steve your Bible. And I was like, yeah, but I think the other dude is is... You know, he invited Steve. You know, he he was the one. Re- he's the reason Steve's here. And I, you probably mean him. And and, and I, you can, I could feel him being like what my dad would do, where he just tilt his head and go, you know, you gotta listen to me, or you just fight with me. So after service, I was like, I don't know what this is supposed to do. And I went back and sat next to Steve, and I said, Steve, Holy Spirit, I just told me, give me your Bible. And I remember the look on Steve's face because because it, it you you'll see you'll see it every every so often. Because Steve was kind of like, okay, all right. I mean, he's like, I don't know if he's ever had anybody do that to him, especially maybe a pastor. Uh, but, but you can really honestly see why God did that. The other guy's been gone for, for a, over a decade, and, and Steve still is, is, is so faithful. Um, but, uh, but you know what? I could have given that to him. It was no longer mine. It was his. And he could have taken it home and said, I don't know why he did that. I got a nice little Bible right here. And he could have forgotten about what was given to him. Now, I know, I don't know. You probably still have it. Uh, I think, didn't you have it rebound one time or something like that? You had it or taped or something like that because he used it so much. But what was given to him, he used. And, and even, if, even if he was confused at first, why? It was like, uh, it's mine. I get to use it now. And so we gotta we, we gotta understand that that God, if we're going to accomplish what God wants to accomplish, we've got to walk in his favor. So, so the first thing that the Holy Spirit pointed out, and we, we talked about this a little bit, it says, For the Lord will bless the righteous. And, and that, that that word right there, bless, is the blessing. The Lord puts a blessing upon the righteous. That blessing is a part of what we get to live in as a child of God. It, it's the blessing that came upon. Uh, upon, uh, uh, well, uh, go, flip over to uh, Genesis chapter 12. Came upon Abram in Genesis chapter 12 where he, he said, um, go to a land, I will show you. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. I'm going to put this blessing upon you. And 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 remember, he went into Egypt and he went he went in he went into uh, different places, and when he went in there, remember when he when he said he said she's my sister, and, and while he was in there, and because because he was trying to make sure that they didn't get hurt, they didn't hurt him, and so he's like, and, and 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 nothing was done to Sarai, something could have been done, but God told him to stop, and there was a plague that came on his house, on on the king's house, Pharaoh's house. And people were dropping left and right. And Pharaoh's like, what's going on? And God said, that is not, you do not touch that woman. That, that is his wife. You give him back his wife. Give you. And, he, and, and, the, and, the, and, and Pharaoh, Pharaoh gave him riches and wealth. I'll send him on his way. Well, this is one man. This is one man versus a picture of the world, Egypt. One man. And God struck down uh, a, 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 a system wiped out a system for this one man because something was right rose up against him. You follow me? What I'm saying that's that's further on in chapter twelve. It, it, it struck down struck down a bunch of people 
because something rose up against one, one man. Oh, that was Abraham. Go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. I really didn't finish reading that portion of Scripture. But he says, if you're Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There is absolutely no difference in you and in Abraham, oh, except this one, is that we got the greater one living in us, not just working for us. He's in us, working for us, going before us. He's our rear guard. He's all around us. Um, but, but, but that's the only difference. The, the, the only, that's, that's all. That's all. He's just in us now. Uh, but, but, but other than that, the blessing remains the same. There's no difference in the blessing that was on Abraham there. Where, where, where as one man, well, I, people will do, people are just so mean, and they do this to me, and they do that to me, and they do... Uh, you know, uh, my boss, my boss is Henri, my boss is this, my, 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 my family, my, my mom, my dad, my husband, my wife, no, no finger pointing. They're this way. And it's, and it's, uh, and it's, 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 it's so rough. It's so frustrating in life. I, it just seems like everything's going against me. Listen, you got a blessing. It doesn't matter if you're just one person. It doesn't matter if the whole world seems to be coming against you. Their system will fall before the favor of God will be removed from you. It's the blessing. It's the blessing of God on your life. Deuteronomy talks about the blessing and makes it very clear that some people will enjoy the blessing and some, chapter 28, verse 15 on through 60, whatever, 62, some will not. Go to Numbers chapter 24. I'm, I'm moving quickly because I recognize my three points are not always uh, a normal three points. I get that. And I, I want to, I, I, I don't, this does not, is not a series. On October, I think, 1st or 2nd, we're starting covenant relationships. And, uh, and I've got to get, get to the, <laughs> got to get these four messages in here. Um. But Numbers chapter 24, verse 1, notice this. It says, when Balaam saw, I love this. When Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel. That's Abraham's seed. We are seeds according to the promise. Beloved, what pleases God? To bless us. For us to walk in the blessing, for a, and favor is a is a specific part of that blessing. It pleases God. Balaam, remember Balak, King Balak hired Balaam to come and to, and to place a curse upon the children of God because they he, they were making him nervous. Are you making the kingdom of, of the devil nervous, folks? Because if you ain't making him nervous, you need to up the ante a little bit. But they were making him nervous, and you know what they were doing. Just living life. <laughs> they, they, they were not doing military exercises. They were just living life. And as a matter of fact, I think it's in 24, it could be in 23, it says there's a shout of the king in the camp. Listen, you know, when we're sitting up here, or st sitting up here, I don't think anybody's sitting. When we're standing up here singing, um, and the bones began to rattle. Rattle! The enemy gets nervous. He don't like it when there's a shout of the king in the church. He likes when we're sitting back on our hands, nervous and, 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 and watching our watch. See, this watch right here, it's, it's a really nice watch. I like this watch. It just doesn't work. The battery ran out. It's all for show. So it's already 420. Closing on 420. So I've been either preaching for a while or we're early. I don't know which one. But, um, but, but, but he enjoys it when people are going, how long has he been singing? It seems like he's been singing for a while. <laughs> Why doesn't Pastor Thad sing some and quit shouting? <laughs> you know, Pastor Thad's voice isn't that bad, but if you just sing a little bit more and just... He gets a little too excited. 
Have you seen Pastor Thad run across the stage? That's not his forte. Stick with singing, Pastor Thad. You guys, you guys like it when I get, get, the, uh, get the microphone stand and start doing the beat with the microphone stand? Let's not do that. Let's leave that to John. Let John do the beat. You do the singing, Pastor Thad. But when we get loud, when we get in that mode of celebration, it makes the enemy nervous. And he starts going out saying, how can I set out a curse against these people? And, and, and the word of the Lord comes boldly to us and says it, it, the Lord, it pleases the Lord to bless his people, to bless Israel, to bless his seed, which we are. I mean, uh, um, go, to, uh, go backwards to Numbers 23, verse 19. Which I think verse 18 might be the one that it says there's a shout of the king of the camp. But I like this. And again, Pastor Mike danced all over this this morning. God is not a man that he should lie. Verse 19, 23, Numbers 23. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received a commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. What's he's, what, what, what he's literally saying is that what God has blessed ain't no one, no thing, nowhere able to switch that around. If God has blessed you, and God has, has spoken favor over your life, then beloved, it is as good as gold. It will not lose its value. It will increase in value as you believe and as you speak it done. It is literally impossible for anyone to do anything that would hurt you. Now we've learned through this story, if you go on to chapter 25, we learn that the children of Israel started doing things their own way. They started doing things contrary to what the Word of God says, and they invited in the curse on themselves. So Deuteronomy tells us that, that it's not God's intent for us to live under the curse, but you can. Numbers 25 tells us it's not God's best, and that nobody else can choose for you. But you still could live under the curse. Matter of fact, I'll bring this one point out because Malachi chapter 3 says, bring all your tithe into the storehouse that there may be, beat meat, may be meat in mine house. Prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open unto you the blessing. See See if I will not pour out favor on you that makes everybody else envious, makes you a delightsome land, makes everybody, makes everybody who sees you go, you're blessed. The nations will call you blessed. The heathen will call you blessed. He said, prove me, test me. My point is, is that when God has pronounced blessing, when God has pronounced favor on you, there is nobody, no thing, no army, no weapon that can, that can take it away from you. But, but you, you can forfeit it. You can. Let me, I'm, I'm going to hit this real quick. Let's just think real quick about the prodigal son. What a beautiful story of this. He asked, dad gave. He left, he lost it all. Things came off the rails. He came back, and it was like he never left. You see that? He was the righteous. He was in right standing with God, He with Dad. He went to Dad and said, Dad, give me my share of the inheritance. And God and Dad gave him his share of the inheritance, gave over if any man lack, let him ask. He got, he, he received. 
He decided, step out from under dad. Step out and do things my own way. And he lost it all. Things, his life came unhinged. And he was like, this is not the way it was with dad. And he tried to come back to dad's at a lower level. And dad said, no, everything I have is yours. There's only one way that I operate. And that was the blessing that's on my kids. So the blessing, favor is a part of the blessing. Number two, favor provides us with absolute protection. And, and uh, you know, when, when I was laying there that morning, that was the how, that's exactly the wording the Lord gave me is that he said, he said, favor provides absolute protection, not just protection. You know, protection can be cool, but you know, some protection things can get in through cracks and crevices, right? But he, he, he said, he said, favor brings absolute protection. And you, and you look at that because it says it surrounds us as with a shield. And we're not talking about the little shield that they would carry on their arm, the little circle one that, uh, that, that was more decorative than it was, uh, than it was, and they could use it, they could, it was smaller, but it was more, they'd walk with it and it would look so, so nice. We're talking about the big one. We're talking about the one that the Roman soldiers would carry that was at least four feet tall. And when, when, the, when the other soldiers would pull back their bows and release their bows, all they had to do was stay behind the shield, sit down, and no arrow formed against them could prosper. Now, I'm not going to take the time for this. This will be in October. But if they did things right, they had somebody right next to them and somebody behind them, and they would, and they would form the front wall, they had the top wall and they would form a back wall and protect themselves on every side. That's called covenant relationships. That's called, that's called when you're going through a battle that you don't have to do it by yourself. That's part of your favor. But the favor of God protects you absolutely on every side. One definition that I read of favor as I was doing some studying today, was, uh, was that it was a support, defense, vindication, or disposition to aid, befriend, support, or promote. I love that. It's a support. It's a defense. Favor doesn't just make sure things come to you. Favor protects you on every side. Isaiah, no, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on, on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It is impossible. Say impossible. Oh, say that again. Say impossible. It's impossible for anything to hurt you. Well, Pastor Thad, what about? What, what about? I'm not arguing that things will try to hurt you. I'm not arguing that, that arrows will come. I'm not necessarily arguing that arrows won't try to sneak through. But you know what? Uh, the soldier also, his faith was the front line of defense. His helmet of salvation, his breastplate of righteousness, his feet shot with the preparation of the gospel. Anything that would happen, try to sneak through, hit, and, and, and it hit the breastplate of righteousness. And you said, I am the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. It hit me, but it cannot stay because I'm under the I'm under the righteous, I'm under the blessing of God. I've got the blessing of God there for the favor of God. This cannot affect me. Amen. All right. So no, no weapon, nothing shall my enemies hurt you. Nothing. Literally, it's impossible for it to hit you. Not your boss. I'm going to have to do this quickly. Joseph had bosses who favored him in the Bible. I mean, he had bosses that shouldn't have favored him, but favored him. You're like, well, my boss is unsaved. So was his. 
But my boss is a jerk. I, I'm guessing his words uh, too. It's just that, I mean, what, one, was, one was a rich man in Egypt. One was a, what, one was a warden of the prison. And one was Pharaoh himself. But they weren't to him. They promoted him. He flourished. Not your government. Daniel and the three Hebrew children saw that. They went as far as throwing them in the fiery furnace. And they didn't burn. Why? Favor of God. Blessing of God on them. Let me ask you a question. Did the flames hit them? Yes, the flames hit them. It didn't burn them though. I mean, literally, I suppose they could have walked in there and worked like a, you know, around you. They could have. But, they, I mean, they're in the fiery furnace. The flames were around them, but it didn't singe them. Didn't even, they stepped out of there and didn't even smell like, like smoke. You go to a campfire, you don't have to stand in the fire to smell like smoke. You just have to be near the fire. They didn't even smell like smoke. Daniel got thrown in the den of, of hungry lions. A political system that threw him in the den of lions and they couldn't eat him. Not sickness. By his stripes, we were healed. Not poverty. He took our poverty. There is nothing. And again, I'm not going to go there is nothing, it is literally impossible for anything to hurt you. There's a protection around you by, because of the favor of God. No matter what's going on in the world, it cannot come nigh your dwelling place. Psalm chapter 91, verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. But it might. You never know. It shall not. What do we know about the word shall? It's absolute. It is the strongest word in the Bible. In Hebrew and in Greek, it is the strongest word. If it says shall, that it, that it means absolutely impossible for it to be any other way. Shall not come nigh me. Verse 10, there shall, shall be no evil befall thee, neither any plague come nigh your dwelling. Shall not. Now, now okay, I said that one. Um, let's do this, and I'm going to finish it up. Go to Psalm, go back to Psalm chapter five, verse ten, because I want you to re let's read in context that he blesses the righteous with favor; he surrounds them with a little shield. Let's read in context. Let's go to verse ten. Verse ten. <laughs> we can't, but Pastor Thad, this isn't love. David was a man after God's own heart. He said, "Destroy them, Lord." Yeah, you know, the people out there that, that are trying to, they're aiming at me. Okay, folks, I'm not saying you pray like this. I'm just telling you David did. Let them fall. You pray this one. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out of the multitude of the transgression, uh, of, of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let those who put their trust in thee My wife goes, okay, move on. Rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Why? Why? Because thou defendest them. Let them that, let them that love thy name rejoice in thee. Because you know, you can't touch this. Should have danced there, right? So, so, beloved, there's a protection that's upon you simply because of the favor of God. Things that happen to others. Things may get treacherous in the world, but they can come not, cannot, cannot, cannot come nigh your dwelling. You have a shield that is in front of you that will stop any of the darts of the evil one. But the cool thing about this shield is that it's this kind of shield that is identified in Galatians where, it, where, where our little our little armor of God, where it calls it the shield of faith. And I will say this as number three. Favor 
is activated by faith. People get so confused because, Pastor Thad, you said it's my heritage. Why isn't it working for me? Because it's activated by faith. It's, it, 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 if it's not working for you, it means you're not drawing on it. You're not believing for it. You're not speaking it. You're speaking contrary. You're allowing the enemy to do, to do forget the, some of the benefits. Think about it. Let's see here. Let's, let's, let's pick on Jessica, my beautiful bride. Um, my other brides are elsewhere, but my beautiful bride's here. I always, I always wanted to be, I always wanted to speak someplace where they didn't know me, so I'd have to introduce my family. So this is my beautiful wife, Jessica, and here's my, here's my two wonderful kids, Allison and Ryan. Uh, and we have a third kid, but he's, we, we, don't, but we don't talk about him. I, just, I always want to. All right, all right. Get back to business. Get back. Quit playing around, Pastor Pat. All right. Um, it just means it's a benefit. It's unfulfilled. But, but let's say Jessica. Je, je, let's say Jessica at her job. She works at the hospital. Let, let's say they decide um, this year. They go, they go, we've had such a great year. We've had such a prosperous year. Uh, that we're going to give all of the the directors of, of the departments a um, hundred thousand dollar bonus, and I know Pastor Jessica's husband's like Honolulu, um, literal Honolulu is where we're going. That's that's literally why I would say that. Let's 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 say a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, I, I want to make it a big big thing because that's something that that people would get, would be like. That's a lot of money. Um, and, and so so they give her a large bonus. And, and, and she's been there. She's been there 18, 18 years. Goodness gracious. Uh, listen, folks. She is the best. That's all. I'll just say that. Anybody that's ever had to do business up there or anything like that, you want Jessica on your side. Just amen. Anyway, anyway, she's, she's been there a while. They, uh, they, 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 she's a director of case management. So they're like, $100,000 bonus. And so she walks home and she's like, she, and her husband's like, he, and her children are like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, mom is going to bless me. Um, so, so now she's got that large, well, let me start with, let me ask this question first. Is that fair to the rest of you? She got the bonus. You all didn't. Is that fair to the rest of you? Uh, yeah, most of you are saying yes. It has nothing to do with the rest of you. It's not your job. It's not your position. It's not your place. All right. Favor of God comes on the children of God. Is it fair to the rest of the world? It has nothing to do with the rest of the world. It's not their area. Quit feeling bad that you're believing God for increase and for blessing in, in, in a really messed up society because it's none of their business. They, if they want some of it, the house of the Lord is wide open. Okay. So this large sum of money gets placed into my bank account, her bank account. You don't have to do anything. And here's the cool thing. You don't have to do anything. And the food just comes to your table. New cars will just start appearing in your garage. New houses will pop up left and right. You don't have to do anything. They put that, that $100,000 minus taxes has been placed in the bank account. You, new life. You just don't have to do anything. Food. She, she'll come home from work and there's food just piled up on this table. Now, again, most of you are going, I think that sounds bad and wrong, but is it wrong? Because maybe you hired a butler or something. Um, that's still not butler wealthy yet, but um, no. You have to tap into the money. You have to take the debit card for that bank account and go get the food and slide that little debit card in there, punch in your little code, take it out, and then you can take it home. Take as much home as you want to take home. She can go to any store in Lexington and put that little debit card in there, punch in her little code, and walk home with whatever she wants. 
She can go to any car or dealership she wants to. Put that little credit, that little debit card in there, punch in her code, we'll drive home with any car she wants. But you got to use the car. You've got to tap into what's been placed in your account. It's not going to jump out and go, jump in his pocket. Oh, oh, look what I got today. I, I don't know how I got there. You've got to tap into it. Beloved, that is the faith. That's faith. Faith is tapping into the blessings that God has given to you. Favor of God is in your account. The children of God, the children of Israel had the ability and had the had the had the responsibility to get into the promised land in about two weeks' time. But they didn't because they never used the debit card of faith. And one of the biggest parts of faith, James tells us it's the hardest part of faith is the words that come out of our mouth. We have the favor of God in our account. We keep talking about how broke we are, how sick we are, how dangerous everything is. Beloved, quit talking about the chaos of your life and start talking about the favor of God. Start talking about how you intend for things to be in your life. According to the blessing, not according to the curse. I am telling you that many people think the favor of God is a dream. And it's something they'll never partake of. Not because it doesn't exist. But because they're not enjoying it. Because they're not speaking it out of their mouth. Beloved, begin expecting companies to work with you. Jesse. Begin expecting companies to work with you. Whether or not they work with others. Begin, begin and speak it. Quit, quit speaking. This is going to be a booger. Expect your bosses to do favors for you even though they don't fa do favors for others. Oh, I don't, I don't want to make them mad. They got mad at another person that asked for this or asked for that or asked for time off or asked for that. That other person... But they go to church. It doesn't mean that they understand the favor. Begin expecting your bosses to do you favors. And speak it. Expect protection over your house. Your family, your kids, your, your wife, your spouse. Whether it appears protection is widespread or not. Talk it, speak it, believe it. Expect your bank accounts to be full. Whether it looks like it or not. And speak it. Because the favor of God is working on your behalf. It's available to you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and don't you dare even think about forgetting any of His benefits. He heals most of your diseases, all your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. I went out of school. I, I got fancy. Lost my place. Don't forget it. Speak it. Speak it. Quit talking about the chaos. Talk about the favor. Quit talking about the mean. And talk about your good God. Let's stand together. I want to be close, close to your side, so heaven is real and death is a lie. 
Um, I want to say, just as, as we wrap things up here, as much as God has the favor of God for you, He loves you and wants you to operate in the favor. He wants your life to be good life. He, he wants you to be a reflection of the good shepherd. You understand there's no good shepherd that comes walking down the road with a bunch of beat up, dingy, worn out, sickly looking, mangy sheep follow by and go, he's a good shepherd. No, he's a shepherd that doesn't take care of his sheep. It's the shepherd that comes down the road with with, uh, those prancing sheep. You know, that have the energy. Their wool is beautiful, clean. They're healthy. They're strong. They go, that's my shepherd. And that's what our good shepherd is. He wants you blessed. But don't ever let it end with you. You know one of the main reasons he wants you blessed? So the world will see how good he is to you and see the goodness of God on you. It's the, I just got, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. It's His goodness. How do they know His goodness? Well, we just need to keep telling them. No, we need to live. Jesse Duplantis, I love the way he says it. He, he said, I, 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 was, I was a renegade when I was a kid because, because the church I went to, they preached, on, they preached on wealth and everybody was broke. They preached on, on health and everybody was sick. And they preached on holiness and everybody was sinning. It ain't, no matter how what you preach on, what are you doing? Let His light so shine that the world may see your good works and magnify Him. Isaiah tells us in chapter 60, Arise, shine, for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. And if we... I'm done with my sermon. But if we look up glory, if we see glory in Scripture, remember Moses said, show me thy glory. And God said, I will let my goodness pass by you. He didn't ask for the goodness. And God said, no, my my, my glory and my goodness are, are the same thing. And prophetically speaking about this time, arise, shine, for the light has come. And the goodness of God, the glory of God is risen upon thee. And darkness shall be over this earth gross darkness over the people. But my goodness, they're going to come because they see the glory, see the goodness, and see the light that is on you. They're going to see the favor on you and go, I want to work for St. Clair. I don't be one of their directors. If they're going to get that kind of, they didn't get that kind of bonus. If they're going to get that kind of bonus, I want to work for them. I want, to work, I want to live for Him. Heavenly Father, this morning, we, I just pray for Your people. I pray for a blessing upon them that just literally knocks new socks on them. I don't want them to just lose their socks. I want some new socks on them. That brings blessing, brings healing, brings brings increase upon them in ways they've never even imagined. That's the favor of God. That when the enemy winds up and tries to come after them in one way, the enemy literally gets disintegrated and flees from us and said, That the favor of God will not be something that they just think about because Pastor Thad preached about it. But the favor of God will become that thing that becomes so real in their life that the world around them will look at them and say, my God, I want what they've got. So Lord, raise our expectancy. Correct our mouths that we may speak favor instead of chaos.
Favor instead of stress. Favor instead of confusion. And we give you thanks. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.